Hey everyone, so I finally decided it was time for a 3D printer. I've wanted one for about five years. Actually, it was this model, but the generation before that I wanted even back then. Watched tons of videos, did a lot of research on them, but at the time I just thought, I can't justify spending 500 bucks on something that I didn't think I would use very much. So, and then watching the videos, you know, people would do all this maintenance on them and having problems with the software, and I thought, well, I'll just keep waiting until things get better and lower priced. Well, I saw this one on eBay the other day, and I placed a bid, like the last four seconds into it, and I won. So I got this for $123 with free shipping. I couldn't believe it. Um, brand new, they're still about $390. So I thought it was a pretty good deal. Um, the seller said everything worked fine, which obviously wasn't true. Uh, I think that's why maybe they got it from somebody who didn't know how to fix it, and they just kind of gave it away really cheap. So the things that I had to fix on it, um, first off, the extruder was clogged like really bad. I had to pull it all apart. No big deal there. Second thing, this limit switch was bent 90 degrees. So whenever it would turn on, it would slam all the way to the back and it never detected the limit. So it would just keep like grinding the belts and I'd have to shut it off. Um, figure that out. Took a while because I was thinking like, why are there two switches for the same uh, axis? Because um, there's another one for the same, you know. And uh, finally I'm like, oh, that's bent. <laughs> um, the big problem was the extruder. So there's a thermocouple lead right here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, the thermocouple lead was broke. I think those are made out of uh, nichrome wire, if I'm right. And they just can't handle a lot of movement. Um, it's just not a really... Uh, ductile metal if that's the right term so it broke and it wouldn't read the temperature so it would never heat up because it would never turn on um, since it was getting no reading so what I did I was gonna initially try and reclamp it into that brass um, fitting there but I broke that and then I couldn't clean it out well enough to clamp it back in I think it was just a, a crimped fitting or yeah a crimped fitting what I'm trying to say, a crimp connection. Um, so I actually just put it underneath the nut and screwed it down tight and it's worked great ever since. Once I got those three things fixed, I found some files on the SD card that came with it. This is the first thing I printed. It looks terrible. And it didn't stick to the bed on one side. And just some clip for something. So, did a little bit of research, got the blue tape that everybody says to use, a blue painter's tape, and put it down, put some alcohol down to clean it all really well, and try it again. Tried a different part this time. This one turned out really good. I don't know what it is, it was called drink clip. Maybe it holds a straw, whatever. It'll probably just end up in the garbage. But yeah, it turned out really good. I was impressed with that. So then, I've got kids, and they're really into the Thomas trains. So I printed out all these adapters for them. And every one of them turned out great. These were all files on Thingiverse. I haven't in, done any of my own drawings yet. That'll be another challenge. Uh, I can draw in Google SketchUp okay, um, but I haven't done the Simplify 3D or any of those, so that'll be a something new to learn in the future. Anyways though, so far I'm really impressed with this printer. I like how the, the side windows you can take out, they're just held in by magnets. And it came with the orange filament, which I haven't gotten into printing any projects that I really want yet because I don't want them in orange, so I brought some gray. Um, yeah, it's got a heated bed. I think it'll do PLA, obviously, and I think nylon is the other one that'll do. So, should be fun. A lot of projects coming up where this will come in handy. I actually just made a VIC, a brand new VIC set. And when I was making it, I thought, man, it'd be nice to have a 3D printer and I could just design these coils with this uh, tab on them to make the connections. But 
I didn't have one, and then two days later I bought this one, so it'll come in handy. Still, once again, pretty happy. $123 in the software and everything so far has been like super simple to use. More to come. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.